Good morning and happy springtime. I hope you can hear all of the birds around me that are twittering. I just saw some chimney swifts fly by and they're all over the place here at springtime. And I have to admit that I am not a, a full-time bird person, but every now and again, they catch my eye and I'm fascinated by their behavior. And especially, it wasn't long ago that I saw a robin in a yard, just like this one, hopping around. And she, I'm assuming it was a she, would hop along and stop, turn her head, and then hop along some more. And then she turned her head again and then pecked into the ground and pulled up a worm. And I wondered what the stopping was all about. Why would she do that? As I said, I'm not a, a, a great bird person, but I know some people that are, and I asked one of them, and she said that that behavior is the robin listening. She'll hop on the ground. That will create a disturbance that will make the worms move around, and she'll listen for the worm. So the first time, apparently, she didn't hear one, and the second time she did, and was able to locate it and pluck it up for her for her kids breakfast. I don't know what kind of good hearing you have to have to be able to hear a worm in the ground, but she had it. And that behavior is amazing to me that that uh, that they have evolved hearing and the ability to use it effectively and since there are a bunch of robins around, I guess it must work. I thought of that very thing the other day when I was listening to uh, one of the website's master classes, the webinar that they had, and the person talking said that as you were, you know, going through and deciding, in this case, it was what kind of uh, assessment to use for a specific client, and in the, the little blurb, the description about that person's behavior, it said that they were fearful. And sure enough, the right answer was a something about anxiety. And she said something that sounded just like <laughs> my bird friend. She said, you, you have to listen to the exam. You have to pay attention to what the exam is telling you as though the test designers had embedded in it the very counseling behavior that they thought that a counselor would need on a regular basis. That the, the, as a therapist, part of your job, a big part, is listening to the client. And in this case, the exam itself was designed to replicate that need for listening to listen, to listen to the exam. That was pretty cool for me. One, that uh, I noticed that the robins were doing the same thing that we're expected to do. That we're not just to, to listen, listen, we're to listen with a purpose. Listen as though our dinner depended on it. Listen with a mind that it's going to modify our behavior productively. And in that sense, of course, the, the, the robin is highly motivated. She won't have dinner for herself or her little hatchlings. For you, well, maybe it's the same motivation. That as we are able to listen effectively, as we're able to listen reflectively, we find ourselves able to pick up the information that we need to make critical decisions. Oh, there's a bird right there. It's called an airplane. It won't be getting any worms. But the better you're able to listen, the better you're able to observe, the better you'll be. Just like the robin, only hopefully with dinner more tasty than the worms she'll eat. <laughs>